I believe this is a profoundly important message and it's complete common sense to me but to some people it might think a little bit out there. We're 93 million miles from the Sun and the Sun is continually exploding these sunspots which have coronal mass ejections and when they're really powerful they break free of the Sun's gravitational field and they shoot out into the atmosphere of the Sun for hundreds of millions of miles. And we as a planet, a little dot of Earth, are 93 miles from the Sun. And coronal mass ejections, solar flares, heavily protonized solar wind, generally always misses us. But NASA has said that there's so many large coronal mass ejections coming off the sun that we have a 12% chance of being hit by one every 10 years. That's really, really dramatic. It wouldn't matter if the date was 1641 or um, 1810 because we didn't have an electric grid. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have cell phone towers. All we would notice is a fabulous display of the northern lights, Aurora Borealis, down in, in the south. And we would go about our days and then the weather patterns might be a bit strange for a few years. Um, back then it wouldn't have mattered. We hadn't cut down two trillion trees. The atmosphere, the climate of the world wasn't so unstable because of the overpopulation of the planet. So historically, we don't have a reference point of the impact of a coronal mass ejection hitting the Earth. Now we are incredibly, incredibly vulnerable. Why are we vulnerable? Because we depend on the electric grid, because we depend on the internet, because we depend on vehicles that are controlled by electronic sensors and computers, because all the trucks out there that deliver our food depend on electronic systems in their engine infrastructure. And all of those systems can be short-circuited by a massive dose of electron protons radiating into our atmosphere from a solar flare. The Earth is protected by a magnetosphere and to a degree by the stratosphere, which dilutes and filters and protects us from moderate solar flares. But if one is powerful enough, like the one in 1859, which is called the Carrington event, which was also seen by a fellow called Richard Hodgson as well as Richard Carrington, but they called it the Carrington event, we would be sent back to the Stone Age or, or at least the Middle Ages. We would not have electricity, we would not have ele electronics, we would not have most forms of transport that were made post-1975. Think about that. The trucks aren't delivering food to the supermarket. The phone system isn't working. The electric grid is down. You'll do okay for a few days. You'll eat all the food in the fridge quickly, have a feast. But the infrastructure in America at this time will not be able to replace the transformers in the electric grid. So there won't be electricity possibly for years. This isn't me saying this. This is National Geographic. This is Fox News. This is other reporters on the subject that are pretty much, well, they are. They're ignored by the general public. When someone says to me that on July 24th, 2012, we missed a coronal mass ejection by two days because the Earth's orbit was just two days ahead of the curve of being hit by that radiation field, and that radiation field would have put us back to the Middle Ages, 
that gets my attention because that means not tens of millions of people, but hundreds of millions of people around the world will die of starvation. When a solar flare hits the earth, breaks through the magnetosphere, stratosphere, it can wipe out satellites, it can deplete the ozone layer, it can destroy all electronics and electric grids that aren't protected and 98% of them are not. And we can sit there and blame the government. Well, we are a dynamic group of individuals that govern our own lives and we should take personal responsibility. So, what does that mean? First of all, recognise that it's not if it will happen, it's when it will happen. Secondly, focus on what NASA has scientifically verified as the probability of when it's going to occur, which is 12% every 10 years. If it does happen, be in a position of strength, be fully prepared to have a food supply for at least two or three years for yourself and your loved ones. Be a good neighbour and have a plan. And do not ignore the likelihood that this will happen in your life. The fact that it hasn't happened is serendipitously remarkable and unusual. We are already beyond the range of statistical averages in the last 175 years that a, that a Carrington event hasn't occurred again. Remember also that though the Carrington event of 1859, and look it up on Wikipedia, was a relatively significant atmospheric event, it was by no means a sp spectacularly large coronal mass ejection. They can be 10 times bigger and can give the Earth as little as from 3 to 18 hours warning, depending on their speed of travel. There are ways of being informed by cell phone that it's coming. Uh, NASA has set up a system like that. Um, I also have that information on uh, my Facebook site called Solar Storm Awareness. But study the subject. Ground yourself in an understanding of the probability of its occurrence. Anticipate a much greater coronal mass ejection than the one of 1859. And take personal responsibility. Thank you very much.